Hello guys, hello guys, hello guys. How are you? Good evening, good evening. It's 4.43. Here. How are you? I'm driving with my right hand. There is a chance you're seeing this as a left hand. Just to let you know, it's my right hand, okay? <laughs> Today, I want to start talking about real estate. In the next few months, in the next few days or weeks, you're going to hear me talk a lot about real estate. I want to share... I'm going to share everything I know, guys. I'm not going to charge you a fee for that, okay? Um, until I decide to have a mentorship program where maybe I'm coaching people and doing everything I share is free. I don't even see myself charging anybody. Um, I'll keep sharing, guys. I mean, God has blessed me with something small. Let's all share. All right? So um, I want to share my real estate journey with you so that you can pick a two or three from it. This video will make more sense to anybody who is living in a developed country. So if you are living in a developed country, uh, this video will make more sense to you. If you are living in the US, your system is almost like the same as Canada. If you are living in the UK or any part of Europe, this concepts will make more sense to you. If you are living in Africa, it may not make more sense to you, but it's the same principle everywhere, okay? It's the same principle everywhere. Um, let me know in the comment section if you can hear me. Good. Let me know in the comment section if you can hear me. Can you guys hear me good? If you can hear me good, drop your emojis. Once I see the emojis or your comments, I'm gonna know that you guys can hear me good. Let me know if you can hear me good. Drop your emojis if you don't mind. Once I blink my eye and I see the emojis, I know you guys can hear me good. Your emojis or your comments, I wanna know if you guys can hear me good. By popular request, Mildred Akumia, you've been asking me more about real estate. Um, I'm not gonna share everything today, but at least I'm gonna introduce you a bit to my own journey, okay? So you guys can hear me good. Emmanuel Obey. Good. Good. Sorry about that. That was my mom calling me from Ghana <laughs> on WhatsApp. <laughs> she doesn't know I'm online. And somebody tell her I'm online so she can she can come online. Somebody tell my mom. If you know my mom, tell my mom I am online. <laughs> She's calling. <laughs> yeah. Real estate, real estate. Real estate is kind of like my newfound love. Um, it is not my full time job. I consider myself a rookie real estate investor. Rookie means that I'm young. I haven't done this for like 10 years. I've only done this for under three years. This is my third year doing real estate. I started in 2018 when I bought my first house. Um, so I'm still a newbie, I'm still learning every day, connecting with more smart guys, you know, learning more. Um, real estate has been good to me, and I hope that as I share my story and my experiences, you pick a lesson or two from it and you learn it. Now, why did I go into real estate? Why did I even buy a house? Um, yeah, I I do own one or two properties here and there, and I do have some rentals, uh, meaning that they generate income for me. Um, it's fun, like the whole idea of becoming a landlord is so nice, huh? Because in the past, when the month ends, I'm the one thinking of how to pay somebody, but now like people have to think about how to pay me, right? So it, it's just so beautiful. But it wasn't something that just came naturally. 
aid was not something I studied in school. It's not like I went to a special school and learned, learned that. You probably by now know that they don't have a course on real estate in most schools. They don't even have a course on stocks, right? Most, most, these things people learn them on their, by, by themselves. Um, that's how bad our educational system is. They don't teach us money. They don't teach us about money making. They don't teach us how to live life. They don't teach us survival skills and life skills. They only teach us how to read and write and uh, analyze things and pass and memorize and go, right? Garbage in, garbage out. So many of us grew up with fancy graduates, degrees and stuff like that, but we still struggle to live life. It is, it is what it is. Um, my main reason for buying real estate or starting real estate, I think it started like this. I had a landlady who is Chinese, who sold the real estate idea to me once. I used to buy cars and flip them. I used to buy cars and just put a lot of coins on it and sell it. So I'll go and buy a car for say $3,000 and then I'll put $500 on top and quickly sell it around and make some profit. And then I will try and look for another cheap car and sell it. That's what I was doing. So there was a time that I had about four cars in my driveway as a tenant. I was a student by then. I had just finished school or something like that. And I was doing this business on the side while still working full time in a factory. Um, there was a time that I had this landlady. Uh, she's Chinese. If you go to my daughter's videos, you actually will see her. Uh, my daughter's channel on YouTube is Diaries of Baby Joanna. Diaries of Baby Joanna. There is one video where you see a Chinese lady, elderly lady playing with my daughter. She's the landlady I'm talking about. I was her tenant. I was a student at that time and she was my landlady. And I was living in this house, which was a three bedroom, main floor. And then the basement was two bedroom. So two bedroom basement. And then the main floor was three bedroom uh, with a kitchen. And I was living in just one bedroom out of the three on the main floor. So one day this landlady called me and then she said that, I can see you have a lot of cars. You have, you alone, you have four cars here in the driveway. No guys, there were other tenants, but me alone, I had parked cars in the driveway just because I was buying cars cheap, used cars cheap and trying to flip them. So this landlady asked me, I see you, do you like buying cars? Is it profitable? Do you make money? And I said, yeah, I make about three, four hundred, five hundred dollars when I sell them. And she gave me that face like that. I see she didn't really think it was profitable. And then she asked me, do you know you could go into real estate and make more money? And I'm like, uh, what do you mean? And then she said, real estate, properties always go up in value but when you buy a car cars go down in value cars depreciate over time but real estate appreciates over time the moment she said that i thought like it was very profound i found it a bit profound i didn't really understand all it but i thought it made sense the analysis she made it made sense to me real estate goes up in value cars depreciate over value so she's trying to tell me that my profit might be good, but it's not smart investment. I'm like, all right. Then she followed up and she asked me a question. Um, how much do you pay for the bedroom that you live in to me? I said I paid about $450, $500 at that time. She said, okay. The other two bedrooms where there are tenants on the main floor, how much do you think they pay? I said, well, the other guy pays about $550, the other guy pays about $500. Then she said, when you put all of them together, how much is it? I said, it's about $1,600. It's okay. And then she asked me, the basement, who lives there? I said, you and your husband live in the basement. So she and her husband were living in the basement, whilst me and other two tenants were living on the main floor. And then she asked me, how much do you think we pay for living in the basement as landlords? I said, well, I don't know, unless you tell me. And she said, we don't pay anything. We live for free. Wow. That hits me again. She's telling me she lives for free. What is this woman telling me? That she's saying she, she doesn't pay anything at all? And what is she trying to say? And then she told me that when I pay my rent and the other rental uh, tenants also pay their rent, those monies service the property and pay up all her debt to the point that she doesn't have to pay anything. And then she mentioned that she had another property in Toronto, uh, which she bought cheap but that property is now worth over a million dollars wow she said she bought it cheap but it's now worth over a million dollars like 
you know i i like num i like money just because of poverty guys i love i love talking about money it's the one thing that when it comes to me you will notice i talk about and my reason for talking about money mostly or loving conversations about business is because i was so poor i couldn't afford not to think about money poverty is a serious shamer it shames you it destroys you it destroys your ego it destroys your self-esteem it makes you feel miserable it makes you feel like a piece of junk it makes you feel so valueless it makes you feel like you are not a human being poverty is a serious weapon the devil uses to humiliate human beings first and because of how poor I was growing up and how much struggle I went through I made it all my life mission that even if I don't do anything at all nobody in my generation will ever be poor guys you can see the passion I'm using to speak this huh nobody in my generation my family coming out of my pipe will ever be poor I will make sure it never happens I promise myself that just because of how much humiliation I went through growing up poor I turned my poverty into an inspiration some of us have been so poor we can't afford to be poor again never my case will never go through anyway fast forward so this lady gave me all this analysis and then she told me that I was the one paying for her to live for free so I asked her more and she said I should consider buying a house and that is a smart investment to do and her English was not so strong even now her English is not so good but she tried to explain the basis to me a little bit so I remember I quickly got possessed huh? I'm the type that when something hits me like that, huh, I begin acting right away. So I remember I went to the bank, uh, my bank, I won't mention the name of the bank. I went to the bank and I told them, hey, I, I want to buy a house. Can you check me out and see how you can help me with a mortgage or something like that? A mortgage is like an official loan you take from a bank to buy a property, right? You take a loan from a bank to buy a property. It's called mortgage. And then you pay an interest for it. Like it's like a loan used to buy property. So I went to my bank and I scheduled an appointment and I, 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 I told them I want to buy a house. Can they help me buy a house by giving me a loan? At that time, I didn't... Okay, this was just when I finished school. So this was like early, mid-2015, 2016, there about, when I had this conversation with this Chinese lady. And at that time, I didn't have my papers yet, so I was just supposed to get a work permit order at that time. Um, so I went to the guy at the bank, he gave me an appointment and he sat me down, he reviewed my documents, my file, my savings, what work I do. And you could tell right away that he was not going to approve me for the loan. He didn't know how to tell me, he was just giving me one of those generic feedbacks, you know. I was curious, I wanted to know why was I not qualified, why couldn't you give me a loan? And he was kind of just giving me those kind of general feedback and responses. You know how they sometimes give you a nice feedback that makes you feel like there is something they are hiding from you, right? Like when the visa officer tells you something general and they are not telling you the actual thing, right? That was how the bank was treating me. They gave me that reason. So I said, I asked him, is it about my savings? Do I not have enough savings? And the truth was that around that time I had probably about maybe a little over ten thousand dollars in savings. I, I I thought it was enough money. I didn't I didn't. I don't know but I he wasn't telling me exactly what it was fast forward I moved from that house but I walked away with the wisdom that I got from that woman that investment in a house was always better than buying a car when you compare the two one appreciates one depreciates over time the car that I drive now has depreciated over time if I sell it there is a chance I won't get exact money back or you might go down a little bit but real estate may have gone up anyway fast forward that was my first profound moment and my my opener my eye opener to the whole world of real estate i never thought about it now the second time that i had i really got an interest i had moved from this house to a different house um and the owner is a white guy a white canadian guy he's a young guy probably in his mid 30s like maybe 37 or 38 i am a choleric yeah i'm a i'm an ultra choleric I'm an ultra choleric. If you know who a choleric is, it's a personality type. I'm a serious choleric. Very ultra. Ultra is already very. <laughs> I will move out of my house and forget that my key is inside. And then I will turn the lock at the back of the door and lock the door. And then when I get to my car, I will remember that, oh, I locked my key, my house key inside. And here I was, I didn't have a spare on me. 
I will try calling this landlord, trying to get a spare key. You will call him and then you will never get him. He's always not answering his phone. What kind of landlord is this? I used to be so, so angry. Like he's never picking his calls when I need him the most. I've locked my keys inside. So I'll go and call the locksmith guy, locksmith. Locksmith guys are guys who are professionally licensed to open doors. When something happens, they can come and open the doors and charge you a fee. So I, I will call a locksmith guy, telling him I've locked my key inside and my landlord is not picking, come and help me open the door. They will come and then they will charge me about $80, $90, $100, just to open the door for me, for me to go get my keys. You see how stupidity they cost me? Just because I was being stupid, Huh? I was being stupid by locking my key inside without thinking as a choleric. I should know that that's my weakness. Choleric is one of their weaknesses is that they major in bigger things and they, they minor in smaller things. So a choleric like me, I'll leave home and realize I didn't take my car key. I'll leave home and realize I don't have my driver's license on me. I'll leave home. See, because when I wake up, I'm thinking about big things all the time. Big things all the time. A big thing like talking to you guys. It consumes me. So when I wake up, I just want to talk to you guys. I could I could talk to you guys and forget that I've eaten. I could forget. Could you imagine the whole day when I went to Toronto? I didn't have food. I didn't eat food though. All that journey I went to. I'm a choleric. Choleric, I can forget about food. It's not healthy. I don't want you to do that. But basically, cholerics focus on so much of big things they think are so big that they will forget the smaller things. They will forget. Look, you if you have a choleric who is a boss, he will come to work thinking so much about the deadline that he'll forget to zip his, his trouser. <laughs> you'll forget to zip his trouser. You'll be the one to watch. Oh my God, my CEO didn't zip his trouser. He didn't even think about it. He, he won't even put on it. He won't even brush his teeth. If you look at my hair, you probably notice sometimes I don't even care. I'm a choleric. They don't care about those things. They care about the big things in life. I'm a hyper choleric. Anyway, so I tend to forget some of these little things. I'll lock my keys all the time. I'll ask myself, where did I put my phone? You know, I'll go around and sometimes my wife has to remind me that when I take a shower, sometimes I take my ring off. Huh? When my ring ties my finger, my wedding ring, huh? I might take it off and then my wife will ask me, where is the ring? And I'll ask myself, where is it? <laughs> Just because, like, that is why God has blessed me with somebody who is not a choleric, right? And she hurts me a lot, right? I'm a hyper choleric. I'm a hyper choleric. Anyway, so I'm trying to justify why I close my doors and leave the keys behind because I'm a choleric. And I'm just so stupid with small things, right? Um, I'm just not good at it. Small things, calories are horrible at it. All right? Um, Trump, for example, he comes across like a choleric. Somebody like Trump comes across like a choleric. So, guys, let me stop here. I'm closer to my house. Let me stop and finish this video before I go home. So, I will call this white Canadian landlord all the time when I lock. And, guys, it didn't happen to me once. I always lock my door. I will, I, will, I will bang the door like this. And then when I walk out, I'm like, wow, I forgot my keys inside. What do I do now? I don't have a spare. And when I make that mistake, I don't even think about that fact that I should try and go and get a spare in case of something. I will make the same mistake again. Hi. Now, wow. Hmm. I have paid a lot of money for keys. So fast forward. But something happened through those moments of losing keys. The landlord finally came back one time to visit the house. And then I asked him, Mike, anytime I call you, I don't get you. Like, are you just busy or something? I, it worries me that you don't answer. He said, oh, I had traveled. And I asked him, um, what is it travel? Like, what travel and you're not around? So who do I call? If something happened, which do I call? And he said, I was on vacation. Anytime he call, I'm on vacation. And I'm like... You mean you are always on vacation from your work? He said, no, I don't work for nobody. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? He said, what do you think I do? I said, I don't know. And he said, well, who owns this house? I said, you. Then he asked me to look down the street, number this and number this, those other two properties. Who do you think own them? On the same street. I said, I don't know. He said, I own them too. So, wow. And then he began pointing properties to me at different addresses in the same city. This guy owned dozens of properties and he was about 37, 38 years old. So quickly, it got me thinking. Then I asked him, so when he you say you're on vacation, was it your properties that put you on vacation? What? He said, because I don't, I don't need salary. I'm always traveling. I'm having fun. And I'm like, wow. 
You mean you make so much money you're always on vacation? He said, yeah, nine or 10 months out of 12 months, I'm on vacation. Wow. Nine or 10 months out of 12 months, he's always in Bahamas, Dominican Republic, Florida, or somewhere chilling. And here I am locking my doors trying to call him. And when the month ends, I'm the one who is rushing to pay the rent. Wow. So I ask him. It's so profitable. He said it's damn profitable. So, okay. How do I start? Then he asked me, what is your status now? I said, I'm, I'm almost becoming a permanent resident. So, okay. Buy a house. I said, but what do I need to do? And then he told me, have this amount of savings. You should try and get about $50,000 saved and go to the bank and tell them you want to buy a house. Make sure you have a job at that time. I walked away from with that idea. This came to add to the first idea I got from the Chinese lady. The Canadian guy gave me the second idea. He was 37 and I was almost in my 30s at that time. And yet he was living a good life. And I was always waking up, waking up, driving on the highway, going to chase overtime money. It got me thinking. Fast forward, I took his idea. I went, I went to work. I worked so hard, saved money, did overtime, saved money. The moment I hit about 50 something thousand, I think I had about 60,000. I scheduled an appointment, went to the bank, told them I wanted to buy a house. And around that time, God had blessed me with a good job as well. So I was making much better money at this point. And fast forward, I went to the banks. It wasn't all rosy. It wasn't like so easy. The banks rejected me still. They thought I was a new permanent resident. They thought my job, my new job was less than two years old. For some reason, they like to work with people who have a job for at least two years or something like that. And my job was less than two years. So they started looking at me like a funny guy. And um, they rejected me until finally somebody advised me to work with a broker. So this is a tip. If you are a first time home buyer and you know your documents are not properly in line, you are new to the country, you don't know your way around. Instead of going to the banks, it's better to work with a seasoned broker, a mortgage broker, okay? Mortgage brokers do the job for you. They look for the deals for you. They find the banks for you. They organize the money for you to loan and then buy the property. If you are new and you don't know what you're doing, I recommend you use a very experienced broker mortgage broker these guys have connections with the banks they are going to take your documents review your documents and make it easy for you by getting you the loan fast forward i got this broker and this broker examined my documents and he started telling me all the problems that i had and the red flags and he told me how i could address them and within two weeks he got me a, a, a financing uh in case you are wondering what i mean by financing it is a loan that i needed to buy the property so this place is not like africa Many people think that when somebody says, I bought a house, it means they use 100% of their money. In developed countries, people hardly use their money to buy properties. They just use a little bit of their own money. They actually take a loan. They take a loan, right? They take a loan from the banks to buy the property. It's called mortgage. Um, the bank will put some of the money down for you and give you to you at a loan with an interest rate. And then you pay it over time. And then you also put some of the money down, right? Um, when I was buying my first property, I did a 20% down payment, uh, meaning that if the property, let me just let me use a random figure. If the property was $300,000, I was not going to bring all the $300,000 to buy the property. All I needed to do was pay 20% of the $300,000, 20% of the $300,000. I have to pay it. And then the bank that gives me the loan at an interest rate will bring 80% of the $300,000 and give it to the seller of the property whilst I bring the remaining 20%. So you see, 20 from me, 80 from the bank, 100%, and that goes to the seller to buy the house. But when the house is bought, the document will be in my name as the owner. The keys will be given to me. Whatever I do with it, whether it's Airbnb or rental, the income come to me. All I have to do is to pay the portion of the loan on monthly basis to the bank until I finish paying it. That is how mortgages work here. Um, they are also in Africa, except that these privileges are not there for the average person. They are normally for people who have middle class jobs and stuff like that in Africa, right? Uh, they are also there. In Africa, people do get mortgages, except that interest rates are so crazy. 20% huh? interest rate. Here, our loans are so cheap, 2%. Um, one of the properties that I just got, the interest rate is 2%, guys. Can you imagine that? 2%. <laughs> 
two percent. Calculate the two percent and see it's almost like free money. Free money. It's almost like free money. It is almost like free money. Two percent simply means free money. Can you imagine? The, the the apartment that I bought, the three unit apartment that I bought with a fire, that property is three hundred and fifty three thousand, right? So imagine if I'm getting a two percent interest for that. It means somebody is giving me the money to buy the property, but I am only servicing it at a two percent rate. If you calculate it, it's almost negligent. It's almost something small, but that property is going to generate massive income in rent, rental income, massive. All right, guys. So that was how I bought my first property, 20% down payment, which came to about 50 something thousand dollars. And then the bank brought the rest forward. But the document was in my name. I'm the owner of the house. I'm the one who has to go and move in and live with my wife. And then when I bought that property, what happened? I had been reading a bit more about real estate at this moment. So I called the same Mike again, the Canadian guy, and I told him, um, sir, I have bought a property. It's a three bedroom and it has a basement which is like an extra space where you could finish huh it has an additional basement which is big enough like the main three bedroom size but there is nothing there. It's empty it's dry empty just like floor nothing is there bone just bone just bone um, I'm planning to renovate it and put some bedrooms there and stuff like that do you have any advice for me and then he asked me uh, what is your strategy? What are you planning to do? Uh, the renovation? How much money? Have you checked the estimate? I said, well, I've talked to some few contractors. It's going to cost me about... Um, uh, it's going to cost me about um, $50,000 to renovate the whole basement and put like a two-bedroom there, a kitchen, a bathroom, a laundry room and everything, right? It's to make it livable. It's going to cost me about $50,000. So he asked me, how are you planning to finance the renovation do you have the savings for it i said well since i bought the property i've been saving my own salary so i think i want to use my salary and then he gave me another wisdom again he said why would you want to use your own money to do the renovation i said well because i thought that is what i should do and he said all right just to let you know rich people don't use their own money so whoa rich people don't use their own money to do renovation he said yes they always look for cheap credit and use it to do the renovation. They never use their money. Hmm. So you mean I could do the whole renovation without my money? He said, yes. I said, but I don't know how to do it. He said, that's why you have to ask. So now, guys, you see why I like Matthew 77, huh? Ask. You see why I like James 4 too? You have not because you are not asking the right people. You have not because you asked not. James fought you. All I needed to do was to ask a wise man and he was showing me the way. I had planned to use my real hard-earned salary to do the renovation of the basement. But by just talking to a wise man, he began showing me how I could get all kind of cheap money, almost free money, to do the entire renovation. So fast forward, I got cheap credit almost in fact the credit that i got came at zero interest rate guys i got a cheap credit to do that renovation for zero percent interest rate meaning somebody was willing to give me the money for free <laughs> poverty no good though hi <laughs> when you are poor the first stage of poverty they start from the mind though eh? before you become physically poor pocket broke huh eh? huh eh? Stomach, belly, hungry. You already poor in the mind though. The first level of poverty starts in the mind. Every poor man is already poor in the mind. Poor mindset, poor thinking, poor software, poor. Software we know if you run on Pentium 50. Eh? Check your Pentium and see what kind of software is running in there. Poverty starts in the mind. A poor person is already mentally poor. Mindset, poor. Knowledge, poor. Nothing, poor. I didn't know all this because I was poor in the mind already. And so this wise man began, 37 year old guy, began just giving me all the tips, all the tips. I got money to renovate my basement at 0%. And I still get some of this credit. Most of my renovations, 0% interest rate. But somebody is going to work so hard and use his own money to do it, thinking he's too smart. But that person is actually the dumbest person around. 
Because that same thing somebody is doing with somebody's money. For free. Allowing you room to use that money to go and do something else. Yes. A poor man is afraid of credit too. Tell me you are not afraid of credit. Those of you, those of you who are in the developed countries, US, UK, many of you are afraid of even using credit card. Now, poverty, you. If you ever feel like you are afraid of using credit card, if the bank is giving you credit card and you've been running away from it, you are so afraid to use, just know that that is the first sign of poverty. You are poor in the mind. You heard it from me. You are poor in the mind. A rich person is never afraid of credit. They use the credit as an opportunity to build more wealth. A poor person is already afraid of, of, of credit. You see, credit is a good tool if you know how to use it. There are different kinds of credit. There is bad credit, and then there is what? Good credit. A bad credit is the credit that when you use, it hurts you. It makes you poorer. It makes you more poorer. A good credit is credit that when you use it, you grow more and grow more. The smart people like Ibrahim Mahama in Ghana will go and take money from merchant bank or different banks and go and use it and build more. Go and give the same money to a poor person who doesn't understand money. He will use it and he will say, hey, I'm in debt too. I'm so afraid. Yes. Until you are mentally rich in your mind and wise. When you see credit and loan, now run where you go, run away. But a rich man plays with credit because that is his field for generating wealth. Guys, I did that renovation. It took me less than one month to finish that renovation. And then when we finished the renovation, I moved down to the basement with my wife. We started living in the basement and we rented out the top. Now, we rented out the top at a price that was enough to pay all our bills on the property. It pays for the mortgage to the bank. It pays all our utilities, water bill, electricity bill, um, name all of them, internet bill. And I was even getting some small profit from it. Somebody who became the tenant began paying me rent. And when I take that person's rent, I use it to pay all my debt on the property. I use it to pay the mortgage. I use it to pay my water bill. Water bill, where both of us, they use, so me and the tenant, we all they use them for the house. So in the use some, I they use some. Light bully, they use some, I they use them. When I take in rent, I they take pay them. When I take in rent, I they take pay mortgage. So at the end of the day, all the expenses that should have come to me for owning that property comes to zero because somebody else was living in it as a tenant and was paying me the money. In short, I had executed what the Chinese landlady was executing at that time. Remember he was living for free in the basement? Now I was also living for free in the basement. And somebody else was at the top paying me rent. That was how I started. The rest of the journey, I'm going to be continuing. I'm going to be sharing every detail of my properties with you. And you're going to see how I do them and how I go about them. You see, there are many ways for making or creating wealth. There are many. Some people are good at doing stocks. Warren Buffett, somebody is good at doing Bitcoin. I am not a Bitcoin guy. I don't know much about it. If you give me Bitcoin, I'll be confused. Mm, um, I don't know anything about stocks, right? If you give me stocks, I would not even understand it. But at least real estate is the one area that I am focusing on. The research shows that 90% of all millionaires who have passed through the surface of this world were once real estate investors. You can't get it wrong. Accommodation is a, is a need. Everybody needs it. If you can find a way to put a place up for people to rent, you'll be paid big money. This is something that those of you living in developed countries can look into. Take a look at your own expenses, guys. I'm talking to you if you're in a developed country. I want to speak to you one-to-one. -one, one -on one-on-one. How much do you make in a month after tax? How much of that goes into rent? If you are somebody who has two kids, three kids, and you are living overseas, Come back and tell me that 60%, 50% of your salary does not go into rent. Have you noticed that more than half of your rent, your salary goes into paying rent? So if you find a wisdom that allows you to live for free and pay no rent, won't you love it? And won't you love the idea that you're living for free? When I tell you guys I'm living for free, I damn mean it. I don't have no bills. Yesterday, I went to do groceries in Toronto. 
the bill came to about $750 for all the groceries I did. But we don't pay grocery money. Yo. We have something that we do that takes, make our grocery bill, they disappear. You did watch them? It they disappear. It they disappear. That grocery bill you see that they buy yesterday like that. Eh? We have something that when we do, it they make it they disappear. We, we have no grocery bills. We have no accommodation bill. We have no rent. Now, in both country where they live, it's called wisdom. It no be age, you can be 60 years and be so poor in the mind and so unwise. Wisdom is not about your age. Wisdom has nothing to do with your six packs. Wisdom has nothing to do with your makeup, your weave on. Wisdom has nothing to do with your nyash. Wisdom has nothing to do with your body. Wisdom is the software running in your mind. Some of you, the software is running in your mind. Huh? It cannot even update 1920 software, uh, computers. Until you face that, huh? you keep by, by bandage and covering all your problems, pretending everything is well. But you know, say they will inside. Pray for wisdom. Oh. Now, wisdom, what we they need in this world? Ever since I discovered these things, huh? I have never felt free in my whole life. I no longer do overtime. Oh. Anybody who knows me knows say I know they do overtime. Oh. I know they do overtime. Oh. I know they do overtime. But when you become so wise, you no longer chase money. Money go to chase you. Rich people know they chase money. Oh. Money they chase them. Hmm? Now only poor people they chase money. Oh. And they keep asking. It seems like the money that butterfly. Eh? <laughs> Before they jump, he move here, he jump, he jump, he jump, he jump, he jump. Rich people don't chase money. Money, they pursue them. Poor people always chase money. And they find out money is elusive. The more they chase it, the more they miss out. Seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. When you seek wisdom, everything will go away. I enjoy real estate. For you to start real estate, don't just go and buy a house. Oh. If you go buy a house, well, you don't understand how it will work. Huh? You go come back and go and cry. And we will mourn you. <laughs> we will laugh at you too. Make sure say you understand how this thing they work before you go buy ammo. Some of you will just go and buy a house without even understanding how it works. And when you finish, you say, I tried it, it didn't work. You think it's in a lotto. This is in a lotto way with the stake. Huh? You don't understand how things they work, you go buy them. Huh? You don't understand how things they work, you go buy them. Uh, I'm not going to answer that question, Mildred. Uh, Mildred, I see your question, but I'm not going to answer. Huh? We have no bills, guys, and I seriously mean it. We have no living expenses, so I have no living expenses, guys. In fact, <laughs> every year I give free rent to my tenants. Every year, all my tenants they enjoy free rent. I'm the own, probably one of the only landlords you can think of. Every year where they give free rent. If any of my tenants know I am online, come and tell me whether this year didn't get free rent from me. Yes, I'm the only person who can wake up and tell you two thousand dollars of rent. Don't pay it this month. Take it for free. That's the kind of landlord I am. But you see, these things will come to you when you seriously have a system that is working. When you have a system that is working. Guys, if you are living in a developed country and you are a family man, this one is more for the family guys. If you are not yet married and you are living in a one bedroom paying $400, $500, you won't probably understand this. But those who are married with kids living in three, four bedrooms in big cities, you guys know what I mean here. You know your rent is killing you. You know your rents are choking your salaries. You know you make money all right, but the half of it goes to rent. Yeah. Until you figure out how to live, you're going to be struggling all the time. Guys, listen. My favorite book in the Bible. I don't mind if you are not a Christian. Don't listen to this portion. Tune off. I don't mind. I'm a Christian. Let me say it. This is what I do. My favorite Bible chapter or the book that I love so much in the Bible it's called the book of Proverbs. You see that book written by King Solomon, huh? And I love Amo. I feel read them all day, over and over again. It's full of wisdom for life. Even if you are not a Christian, you need to read that book. It's called Wisdom for Life. The more you read that book, the more you go see how mumushious you are. <laughs> the more you read that book, the more you go see how jimishious you are. Mm? How olua you are. Eh? Mm? That book will expose all your foolery, like you. That book, you know the, you know the, you know the means where so, you know the, you know the butter, the, you know the cover, you know the, you they say I'm plain, plain. I learned from the book of Proverbs that you are either here or you are there. You are never in the middle. 
the book of proverbs say things as they are you are either poor or rich there is nothing like middle class you are either a fool or you are a wise there is nothing like a little bit foolish a little bit wise you are either this a lazy person or he said go to the ways go to the ants you fool and consider her ways it didn't say you who is a little bit foolish or a little bit wise so he said you fool that book if you read at me it will feel like it will be like saying they insult you straightforward though now wisdom for life it puts life into two spectrums you are either on the far end or you are on the far end there is nothing like a mother ground i love that book the book of proverbs the book of proverbs it will teach you everything proverbs 23 is it as a man thinketh so is he the way you think that's the way your life go day it is proverbs so eh? guard your heart guard your heart guard your heart because out of it comes the issues of life guard your heart now the deep things of life they inside your heart. Now only you know them. You did your heart inside. You know, say so you did poor. Guard your heart. Because that is where the big things of your life are. I love Proverbs so. I know the joke with that book. I feel read them over and over again. Because the more I read it, the more I see how foolish I am. The more I read it, the more I see how I need to step up. We need wisdom, guys. Now, this same country I do, I've not been here for even 10 years. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not here trying to brag and show you guys anything. Somebody has lived in this same country for 40 years from Ghana. Cannot even boast of toothpick. Eh? Maybe older than me. You know, be age, oh. You know, be how many years we you travel, oh. Now, wisdom, oh. You feel travel, get all kind of passport. You still go there stupid like you did from Africa. Now, wisdom, where you they need to survive. It's not about age. The moment somebody talks to you and he wants to just use age to shut you down, you are too young, you are too dead. Come on. Are you really serious? When did age become a factor for measuring EQ and IQ? When did age become a factor? Somebody is 30 something years old, he has already built Facebook and changing the whole world. You did there. Come on, come on, toothpick, you know, if you do them. Come on, bank yourself, you know, if you stay. You won't make I give you credit for her being how old. If you are too old, go away and die now. Age is not a factor here. It's all about wisdom. Wisdom doesn't care how old you are. Wisdom comes to the man who discerns life. Yeah? I'm going to be sharing my real estate journey. And I'll share it with you raw and hot. Maybe yours is not to do real estate. Maybe yours is to do something else. But the overall thing I want you to get is that, look guys, this universe where they see, eh? whoever created this universe, my God, who created them, huh? He put secrets behind though, to hold this universe so where they work in a certain way. Until you discern how this universe works, you continue to struggle and struggle like a whirlwind, going around in circle. Some of us don't even sit down to understand how this universe works. We never sit down to ask, this shirt, where are they? Where? Where is it coming from? Who made it? How much was it made for? How much did it cost me to acquire it? Who is the one who won the who won the profit when this was made? All we they do we say we just they run things. You go pick remote, turn TV on without asking how this thing came into existence. And you want to sit there for money to just come to you? Those who sit down and ask questions. How are things working? How are things working? Look at it. Just look at yesterday, guys. When I went to that grocery store, I was trying to look for a box of mackerel. I kept looking for it and I kept looking for it. I know all the time when I come, this mackerel box is here. But I kept looking for it and I couldn't find it. I could have just decided to give up and buy something else. But I kept walking around and walking around until I spoke to a Chinese guy who now went inside and brought me eight boxes of mackerel. Until you begin to question things and keep asking, you will never get them. I could have just walked out without getting those mackerel and it was right inside their, 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 their storehouse. Begin to question things when you walk around. Begin to observe things differently. Some of you have eyes where they take look only. Some have eyes where they see. Wise people, they see you. They know they look or they see. When you begin to see, yeah, your eyes connect to your wires. Your wires connect inside every part of your body. And it connects to God. And God begins to give you all the secrets of life through it. When you look at something, you pass. Have you ever seen a man who is looking at you? You ask him, brother, are you looking at me? He said, no, 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 I'm not looking at you. In idea on you, but he say, you know, they look. If they look at you by eye, no, in mind, in mind, they disconnected. 
Some of you, eh? You they look things by your mind, they disconnected. Some of you go they watch this video, your mind go they disconnected. Some of you go they watch this video, you know, we even see waiting at the talk. Those of you who they watch, now you wake, they put the comments and there and say, you know what? This. Because you are connecting. You are connecting. You are not just looking, you are seeing. You are seeing. All right. Um, we're going to be talking more. My wife is calling me, so I should be getting home now. Um, <laughs> I'm just 30 seconds away from the house. I'm going to be sharing more and more. Hmm? Um, I'm going to be sharing more and more. And I pray that you find value. I'm never going to impress anybody. I don't need to impress anybody. If, if, except you don't know me, guys. I'm not here to impress anybody. I don't need to. I don't need to. And I'm not here to... I'm not here to... Um, I'm not here to impress anybody at all. Some of you will think that I'm just saying this to show off. I don't need to impress any of you. I've been hustling for a long time, bro. I'm not here to impress you. Whether you watch me or not, guys, you're going to hear read about my history tomorrow. Whether you watch me today or not, you're going to be history reading about my history tomorrow. Because I'm about to leave a mark on this word. Huh? <laughs> and I joke, you know, I have been too poor in life. I didn't come here to joke. I didn't come to Canada to watch Niagara Falls or to watch a skyscraper. I came here for serious business. I'm not here to joke. I didn't come here for selfies. No. I came here for serious joke. So those of you who gonna look at me say now something else, you got it wrong. Now serious. I have been too poor in life. I'm not ready to go to another phase. Nobody will suffer. God bless you guys. We'll talk again. Share this video, let it reach people, okay? Share with friends who are overseas, huh? And let's help each other out. Peace out. Join me on YouTube. All my real estate videos are going to be on YouTube, guys. All my real estate videos are going to be on YouTube. A wise person will follow me. I post fun for that. You can't ask me. I'm not going to talk. Oh. If you know, know my YouTube channel, Nachoko Milone, I go look for Ramo. Don't come here and ask me, where did you do this? Where did this? I told you all my YouTube videos. My real estate, all of them go there on this thing. Oh. You know, say this on an introduction. Oh. Two days from now, I go get kids for one of my properties. I go start to do renovation. I go to do everything green brown. Some of you go can ask questions later. And I said, I go to watch you like this. Eh? I go to watch you like this. I just go to watch you like this. All right. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Mm.